All right, Zener diodes. Why are they called Zener? Because Mr. Zener found, about it, found out about it. <laughs> so there's a, a, something called the Zener effect. And uh, we'll talk about that a little later. But the Zener effect is used to make Zener diodes. And that's not, not really a total truth either. But we'll talk about that later. But anyway, Zener diodes, Mr. Zener. Um, you can draw them with kind of a right angle arms here. Or you can draw it with kind of slanted arms, okay? You see it both ways, so those are Zener diodes. Okay, so what is the claim to fame of a Zener diode, all right? So this is a curve that we're gonna draw here. So we're gonna graph voltage versus current. So a normal diode, if you start increasing the voltage or increasing the current, you'll, you'll get a curve that looks something like this, right? And usually for a silicon diode, you know, this is somewhere around 0.7 volts, something like that, right? And maybe a lot of diode testers test at, uh, test at 10 milliamps, okay? So we have uh, 10 milliamps here, and we have 0.7 volts here, and we have, this, we have this curve. Well, what if you put negative voltages on a diode? Diodes are kind of one-way valves. They don't like to go in reverse, so... An ideal diode uh, will, will just continue. It won't conduct any current with negative voltages, all right? And everybody knows if you put too much on it, they die, okay? So they'll break down. This is called the breakdown voltage, okay? So this is a normal diode. It's going to go in the forward direction, and then it's going to break down, okay? Zener diodes have a controlled breakdown by putting in different amounts of material in the uh, diode junction. You can get it to break down earlier or break down later. And where they break down, you can set this voltage. So if you want a, a six volt zener or a 10 volt zener, you know, a four volt zener, you, you, you make the uh, PN junction have different characteristics, have different materials and densities, and it will break down at different at different places, okay? All right, so let's look at this effect on a, a curve tracer. We can see it in real time. All right, we're gonna be using a curve tracer. I've done a bunch of videos on this. This is a Tektronix Type 576 curve tracer, and it will give us a plot of voltage versus current, just like the little graph that I drew. All right, so let's uh, zoom in here. Let me kill the lights so you guys can see what's going on here. I'm gonna be a spot, and let me just give you a, a graph here first. Okay, so it's generating that graph I just showed you. It's uh, when it goes up in voltage, it'll finally go up in current. Current is in the vertical direction, and voltage is in the horizontal direction. And we can read the scale right here. Horizontal, we have 100 millivolts per division, and vertically, we have one milliamp to, per division. So uh, we have uh, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5 volts, 0 0.6 volts. Oh, it's going up. And right about there, it's 0.7 volts. So this, uh, this particular diode, this is a uh, 1N4148 or a 1N914. They're kind of the same thing. And so at 0.7 volts, it's conducting about 6 milliamps of current. That's what this graph is, okay? And... Um, so that's, that's acting like a normal diode. It is a normal diode. It's probably the one, one of the most popular diodes ever used. All right. Another thing we can do with this curve tracer is we can make it more like that, that graph that I just showed you. Okay. Where, let's see here. Let's change the things here. So we're going to go plus voltages. So gr this is where zero voltage is. Zero voltage, zero current. And then plus voltages will have this thing. And I said a perfect diode will just keep going left. It'll just keep going left, keep going left, keep going left, right? Just, just, just forever, right? And so let's, uh, let's change some numbers here. Uh, okay. So I've changed it so that we're now 50 volts per division, okay? So the diode's going to start turning on right there at 0.7 volts, right? So it's not going to get any bigger than one volt. But in the reverse direction, look, it goes to, it goes to uh, 50 volts. 
it goes to 100 volts, so this is like the perfect diode. In the reverse direction, even 100 volts, it's working fine. And then we'll just keep going. And whoop, right there, see where, right there? That's where the breakdown is starting to occur. So this, this particular diode has a breakdown characteristic of about 140 volts, minus 140 volts. All right? Um, so, uh, it's kind of looking like a 140 volt Zener diode. It's not exactly made to do that, but that, but that, but that's what, what this one is doing. Okay. All right. So let's back up. Let's go back to a normal diode picture here. Go back to a hundred millivolts and we can get this nice, this nice picture here. Okay. So I'm going to take out that diode and I'm going to put a different diode in its place. And I'm putting in a Zener diode, okay? But we're going to test it in the, um, in the forward direction. And look at that. A Zener diode in the forward direction looks just like any other diode. Here's half a volt, 0 0.6, 0 0.7, right? And so it's about 7.75 volts at 5 milliamps, okay? So in the forward direction, Zener diodes act just like any other diode, okay? But let's look in the reverse direction. Remember the graph, we'll look in that reverse direction. So we'll go back here, uh, okay? So in the reverse direction, let's see here, we'll put it on uh, 10 volts per division. And this particular one here, we'll change it. There we go, one volt, one, one volt per division, okay? We're gonna start in the middle, and in the forward direction, it's gonna start going up at 0.7 volts, but in the reverse direction, look at that. This one's doing something funny. So here, one volt per division, so we're at one, two, three, four, four, four and a half volts. So at four and a half volts, this diode is breaking down. Remember the regular diode went all over 150 volts before it broke down, but this one's breaking down at five volts, four and a half volts actually. Well, this is a Zener diode. This, this early breakdown is due to the Zener effect. And um, so let's talk about this Zener effect a little. Um, diodes can break down for two different reasons. They can break down because of Zenering the Zener effect, they can also break down due to the avalanche effect. They can, and both of these are when you get lots and lots of carriers all smashed together, it can kind of break through this PN junction and conduct, even though it's not supposed to conduct, there's so many carriers in there, it's gonna conduct anyway, even in the reverse direction. And that's what happens here. And when it does it below five volts, it's called a Zener, or it actually is using the Zener effect. So Zener diodes that do this at five volts or below are using the Zener effect. But Zener diodes that have a higher voltage, like a 10 volt Zener, is actually using the avalanche effect. And this particular diode, because it's right around five volts, is probably using a combination of both. A little bit of Zener, a little bit of Avalanche, kind of hard to tweak the two, figure out which one's doing which one, but it's basically, you got too many carriers all in one spot and it's starting to conduct, all right? The other thing you'll notice here is it's not a very sharp cutoff. You expect it to, you Zener diode, you expect to go out and just go whoosh and go straight down. And we're not going straight down, we've got this big knee, but we're looking at a one milliamp scale here, okay? So let me change it to a 10 milliamp scale, okay? So here's 10 milliamps of negative current, and then here's 20 milliamps of negative current. And you can see between 10 and 20, 10 and 20, there's not a big change, okay? There's just not a big change. We can look at this a little bit closer by doing a trick here. I'm gonna put the, I'm gonna put the diode in backwards, and then I'm gonna trace it in the forward direction. And um, so this is the reverse direction flipped in X and Y, okay? So we can get a little bit, we can get a, better, a little bit better look at it. We can change our scale here. 
okay? So here's half, half a volt, one volt, ha two volts. Let's see, one, two, three, four, four and a half, and then 4.75. So it's about 4.75 volts in this particular case. So this is in the reverse direction. And if I go a little bit further, I need to change scales a little bit here. If we go fur, oops. Uh, if we go further, it's it's almost up and down, right? I don't want to blow up this device. I'm just be real quick about it. Um, so this is 10, 20, 30, yeah. Um, this particular Zener device can dissipate about half a watt, so I just don't want to get it very hot. But you can see when it's Zenering, it's basically a straight up and down line. It's pretty, pretty, it's pretty good. The data sheet will tell us how good though, and at what if we want to use this as a voltage regulator, we kind of want to use it in its vertical line. And so we're going to have to have a, at least a little bit of current in it, right? In this particular one, it looks like really you need to have at least 20 milliamps before it enters that straight line. If you have it below 10 milliamps, it's real bendy and that's not good. You want to kind of have it in its vertical direction. So, all right. So enough with the curve tracer. Let's talk about how you use Zener diodes. Thank you.